Yo, Jason here. I've been a web developer for like six years now and I get this question all the time. Look, people always want to know how they can learn how to code. So this video is about how I would learn how to code if I were to start all over again. Before we start, I want to clarify something. Are you looking to learn a code to make a product to as a hobby? Or are you looking to learn a code to get a job? Depending on how you answer this question, your curriculum is gonna be vastly different. If you were wanting to make something like a virtual reality app or solve some crazy computer science problem, then your time horizon is a long time. So this video is for those who are looking to learn a code just to get a job. And I really believe that you can get your very first entry level junior developer job in as little as six months. Some of you might be thinking that six months is not enough time to learn everything to get a big boy, big girl developer job. Okay, so that might be true, but I think what's underlying that fear is the fact that you think you need to know everything. Well, you don't. Look, throughout my six years career as a developer, I've worked at small companies where it was basically like two men and a server to big ass corporate jobs to small team startups and now a Silicon Valley company with over 3,000 really smart people. All that to say that the one thing that all these experiences have in common is you never stop learning. So what I'm really trying to say is that even senior folks are not expected to learn everything. Nevertheless, a junior developer. One of the core traits of being a good developer is Googling. Look, I'm not trying to say that you can get by, you know, without knowing anything, but I really think all you really need is a solid understanding of some core concepts, some core fundamental concepts. And really, you gotta develop a skill to search for answers online. Plus, your employer will be taking a huge risk if he or she is expecting a lot from a junior developer. The point is, don't feel like you have to know everything. You just really gotta know the basics. So this is how I will plan it out. Now, say the goal is to get the job within six months, which I think is totally doable, maybe. Try not to get so hung up on the numbers, like six months, seven months, eight months, or whatever. And instead, try to think of it in terms of phases, right? You go through these phases or these levels. That's because it's gonna be different for everybody. Not everybody has the luxury to dedicate like eight to 12 hours a day to learning, which I did because I moved back home with mama and papa. Don't you love being Asian sometimes? Smash the like button if you agree. Okay, so first, I need to pick a programming language and that language will be JavaScript. Why? Well, there are two main reasons. The first is that there are a lot of jobs for JavaScript developers. See for yourself, just Google top programming languages and more often than not, you will find JavaScript as one of the more in-demand languages. And the second reason is, despite all the hate that JavaScript gets, it's the only language that I know of where you can write both front end and back end applications with the same language. So imagine from an employer's perspective, you have a team where you have front end devs and back end devs, and everyone can help each other out when it comes to, I don't know, certain JavaScript related problems. So now that we picked a programming language, I would dedicate the first two or three months to learning the fundamentals of programming with JavaScript. I would learn the basic constructs of programming like variables, data types, objects, loops, if statements, functions, what the heck is an algorithm? What is object-oriented programming? I would do exercises and tutorials on Codecademy to get the basics down. Okay, so a word on how I would approach these tutorials is I would follow the tutorials down to a T. Basically, I would repeat them over and over again until I can do them without looking at the solutions beforehand. Repetition, repetition, repetition. 
That's like the only thing I can think of that can help you skill up really fast and commit stuff to memory. After learning the fundamentals of programming, I would move on to HTML and CSS. Okay, so real quick, HTML is like the foundation or the skeleton of your web pages. And CSS is like the cosmetic, the glitter. HTML and CSS helps us with the presentation of our content. At the same time, I would watch a bunch of YouTube videos about how websites are made and also I would look into what a web server is. I would then try to make a personal portfolio website using just HTML and CSS. I would use unsplash.com to get some good looking copyright free photos. And if I'm being more ambitious, I would try to deploy that website to a server and a host somewhere and get that URL and share it with some people and you know, build some momentum. You have to keep that momentum going. And trust me, like seeing your creation live um, and being able to share it with others, it's a high in itself and it can get pretty addicting. After HTML and CSS, I would move on to doing a deeper dive on JavaScript. So up until this point, we've become a bit familiar with JavaScript because we've learned the fundamentals of programming using JavaScript. Now we want to take a deeper dive into JavaScript by learning how it can help us manipulate our web pages, specifically the DOM, which is the document object model. I would style and I would make the portfolio website a little bit more interactive using JavaScript. An example could be, you know, greeting the user and telling them the current time. I would also make a to-do list application using just vanilla JavaScript. Meaning, I won't try to use any UI libraries like React, Vue, Angular, none of that. I wouldn't even worry about backend stuff like APIs or databases. So after doing our deeper dive on JavaScript and how you know we were able to use it to manipulate our web pages, I would pick up a full stack resource that teaches you React for the UI layer, Node.js for the backend API layer, and this might be, you know, up for argument, but I would pick MySQL as the database. Uh, I know NoSQL databases like MongoDB is super popular right now, especially with the hipsters. But the job market, again, our focus is getting a job, getting a job, getting a job. And SQL, okay, the query language of, you know, relational databases, like that is still number one. I don't care what anybody says, you know SQL, you can get a job. I would go to places like Udemy to find a full stack uh, course, or preferably, I would pick up a book. The reason why is because you need to start getting into the habit of reading. Man, it can be argued that most of your time spent as a developer is going to be on reading, whether it's reading code, whether it's reading documentation, whether it's reading just design specs, there's a lot of reading that goes on, okay? Reading in terms of just looking for the answers too, like that's, that's a lot of reading in itself. And this is especially true when you're joining a team with an existing code base, which is most likely going to be the case. It's very rare that a junior developer gets thrown on to a greenfield project. Another tip is I would pick a full stack resource or full stack course or whatever that covers at least two or three projects. I'll talk about that here in a little bit, but another tip is you want to make sure you stick to this full stack resource only. It can be tempting to jump all over the place because especially in tech, like the shiny object syndrome is probably the most prevalent. Like it is very tempting to just, you know, go learn Python, go learn Haskell, go learn iOS development, go learn Android, go learn VR. All these things, all these technologies and all these whatever are just constantly tugging at your attention, you know what I mean? 
just stay focused. So after working through the full stack resource, I would start marketing myself aggressively. I would make sure that my portfolio website with all its links to its projects and whatnot, is nice and clean and works. I'm not kidding when I say make sure those links work. And remember when I told you, you know, you wanna pick a full stack resource with at least two to three projects? Well, that is because I would basically build on top of those projects by just remixing them. Let me tell you what I mean by remixing it. Matter of fact, this is exactly what I did to get me my first job. So long time ago, when I got really serious about learning to code, I picked up a book called PHP, MySQL, and JavaScript. Don't ask me why I was learning PHP. The book basically walked me through a blogging application project, okay? And really, like, blogging applications are really just like CRUD applications create, read, update, delete, right? Which is like 80% of like all applications out there. I just made that number up. I basically remixed this project by using basically the same code base, okay? But slapping like a different like branding and feel to the website. I remixed this blog project into a bulletin board basically where people can post their legal issues and then lawyers can come on it and you know try to find business, right? Try to solve other people's problems and get leads and whatnot. I called it Modern Play-Doh, and let me tell you something. It was a piece of shit. However, the landing page was pretty impressive. And what I mean, what I mean by that is it just had a cool photo in the background. But this impressed the hiring manager at my first job so much that he asked me to come in for an interview. The point is, remixing these projects can just be purely a CSS cosmetic, you know, branding, rebranding type of thing. Like you don't have to re-engineer like the whole front end or re-engineer the whole back end, uh, you know, and solve like crazy quantum mechanics problems for this stuff, okay? It does not have to be that complicated. You just gotta make sure it works. And yes, you will impress people if the website is responsive and works well on a mobile browser. Oh, and one more thing, stuff on your portfolio does not have to be full-fledged projects, okay? They can just be demos. An example could be like building a selection drop-down list using React or Vue. Okay, so back to marketing. I would make sure that I have all of my code pushed up to GitHub as well. Just make sure that you don't push up any sensitive uh, information like username and passwords. Why GitHub? All right, let me tell you another story. When I interviewed for my first big corporate dev job, I didn't even have to do any technical questions. Seriously, the hardest question that I got was, what are your most proudest moments? After I got the gig, I asked the senior engineer who interviewed me, hey, why didn't you ask me any technical questions and why was the interview so easy? Basically, he told me that he checked out my GitHub and that was enough to basically let him know that I knew a little bit of something about Node.js. And he said he was just impressed that I even had the projects up and running. I eventually got that gig and that was a six months contract to hire gig for which I eventually got hired on full time as a senior software engineer. And up until this point, I've been coding for like a little bit less than two years. And again, I did most of my learning on the job. Okay, so now we got our portfolio up and running. Um, we got our code pushed up to GitHub. So now we want to apply to every job that we see. I wouldn't be too picky about any of the jobs because let me tell you this, the odds of you getting a job while you already have a job is so much more better. It's kind of like relationships and dating. Every girl comes out the woodwork and start, you know, DMing you and feeling you when you're with someone else. Also, don't look down on contracting gigs. If you're good, and hardworking, trust me, 
they're gonna find a way to keep you around. Okay, another tip that I would give you is continue reviewing and refining concepts that you've already gone over. What I mean is keep learning and keep reviewing concepts like HTML and CSS even after you've moved past it already. Keep doing basic programming exercises daily and you know, make flashcards, do whatever you need to do. I mean, just be a real nerd and look at your flashcards while you're Netflixing and chilling. I bet you won't do it. Also, network, network, network. I know I placed the marketing phase towards the end, but let's be real. You need to be networking aggressively as soon as you start your journey. Try to make friends with people you know who are currently who currently is a developer or try to get an introduction to someone who knows someone who is a developer and try to build a relationship and try to stay in touch with them i would take them out to lunch or take them out to coffee you know whatever i need to do to build that relationship for example when i was trying to get going on my journey I was also doing photography on the side. So basically I was taking pictures for free for people who I know that either they were currently a developer or they knew someone who was also a developer. Okay. People love pictures, man, like especially if they have a family. So aside from the obvious reason that these people might help you get a job, they're also probably way more experienced than you in the field. Which means when you eventually get that first gig, these people are going to be like your lifeline sometimes. You know, for times when you can't seem to figure out anything at work. There you have it. This is how I would go about learning the code if I were to start over again. I would say manage your expectations I know there are lots of YouTubers and people out there who are flashing their crazy six-figure salaries um, and you know people out there saying that they got into Google without ever coding in as little as three months blah 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 it's totally possible however I would say a more realistic expectation is I don't know like a $45,000 to $65,000 per year salary as a junior developer depending on the city that you live in. But remember, the goal is to get our very first coding job and a foot into the industry. I'm telling you, once you get a couple of years under your belt and you consistently and constantly, you know, learn and hone your craft, you can probably make six figures in three years. Last but not least, I know, I keep on making this video longer. I would highly suggest you go into monk mode. What I mean by this is only surround yourself with people and things that will help you get closer to your goals. Cut back or just eliminate altogether going out on the weekends, going out on the weekdays, happy hour. Nah, none of that. Stop hanging out with your friends who are doing nothing with their lives and just always partying all the time. Trust me, when you are trying to make a big change in your life, and this is a pretty big change, the people that are closest to you more often than not will be the source of negativity and a lot of frustration. If you made it this far in the video, you're probably pretty serious about learning the code and probably you're feeling my style of teaching. So hit that like and subscribe button because I'm on a mission to teach all those who are looking to learn how to code so they can change their life. Peace, see you in the next video.